I want to talk about incidental value and this idea that tremendous things are mixed up all around us and uh, we don't we don't notice them because we're we're so uh, flooded with things that we perceive to be of low value that we miss the things that are of really high value and so this is uh, a flower I think it's an orchid but it is my wife's flower and she's nursed this thing for years why well, say that actually let me tell you the truth so she was gifted this thing I don't know how many years ago it was a long time ago and I you know it was one of these things like oh hey I got you this flower and you you know you expect it to die pretty quickly it turns out that not only did it not die um, it's it's thrived here which is crazy because it's like a swamp flower and um, we live in the the cold wilderness so um, I was just walking around so she's done very little to maintain this thing she's just kept it in a in a pot and and you know you have to water these things in a weird way I think she just puts ice cubes on it and it trickles out but um, it's amazing it's doing fine I don't think she ever feeds this thing or anything and um, uh, it, it blooms uh, not like every day or anything, but on a regular basis, surprisingly frequent basis. And um, so anyway, I was doing my morning routine uh, and just kind of like in my little zone, in my little world that I do early morning. And I walked by here to, to get some eggs real quick. And uh, I saw this flower and it just, it stuck out from the background. You can see We've got our winter supply of wood stacked here on the porch. And um, I mean, it, this is like stunning. This is, of course, this is not gonna do it justice. But you know, I'm looking at like the little toys that one of my kids left. And, um, and the, this flower just like, just popping right out of the background. And uh, it just, it looks like it's, it's more beautiful than, than a painting could capture and I was just staring at the details and just kind of stunned by it so um, I wanted to just share some quick thoughts about this because it just triggered this flood of things and I'm not going to get into the flood because um, I have things to do but um, so sorry I'm trying to dodge children um, okay so um, I wanted to tell a story. There, there are a million different dimensions we could explore with this, but I wanted to tell a story uh, about money to, to convey this um, because that flower, it's visible, but it's not perceptible by many people. I mean, I pointed it out to my kids and they're all like, whoa, but it was sitting there. They could see it, their eyes work, but could they appreciate it? And again, we could talk about this for, for hours, but I'm not going to today, although it'll feel that way for most of you. <laughs> uh, so um, there's tremendous value in, um, in things all around us. We think of heaven as something that's going to be way better than it is here. And it is, that's accurate. But in some ways, that's not true at all. It's funny how things can be accurate and also not true at all, but, but so it is. Um, it turns out the biggest difference between here and heaven, and I'm telling you from things I know that I've experienced, I mean, there are things that are super different, like colors. It's just so much richer there. It's not, I don't have the ability to describe the difference. It's just so much richer there. And, but you look and you see and you're like, oh yeah, this is red, this is green. But um, it may as well be something completely unrelated because it's so much better. And, um, and there are things that are not there that, that we would say are bad things that make life harder or less joyous here. But the biggest difference between here and there is in how people value what is. And the amazing thing is there is nothing limiting you from bringing that into your life here and now. And you can acquire, develop, and apply 
that same sense of value here. And because there are so many similarities between here and there, guess what that means? A great deal of the joy that is available in heaven is available to you here and now. Right now, and I do not care what the particulars of your life situation may be, what I said is true. So, and that's because God stuffs so many things of such great value into every single human life. It's amazing. So, um, everything's oriented so that we have every opportunity to learn um, a better valuation, but the difference is not namely in, the, the, the difference doesn't mainly consist of what, it consists of how we see it, what we perceive it to, to be, the value we perceive in it. So, um, so here's a, a story, and, and on the one hand, I apologize for using a monetary example, but, but on the other, again, there's a million different ways we could explore this, and I'm choosing this one for the particulars of the story and how I imagine it will assist people to get a few things that are important. So years ago, uh, I found myself suddenly in a situation where I had a whole lot of money, a whole lot of money that I had nothing good to spend on. So um, my wife and I were talking about different options we might have to invest it in certain ways, etc. cetera. And um, I don't remember exactly how much money this was, but it was six figures, which, you know, you, maybe that's not a lot of money for you, I don't know. Maybe it's a fortune for you, it was for me. This was an unexpected boon and we found ourselves with at least 120,000, it may have been more than that. I don't remember. And so I said to my wife, uh, look, we've looked into things we might do with this uh, to grow it as wise stewards. But frankly, I don't really see anything at this time that, that makes sense that way. And uh, years ago, we were in a position where things were looking pretty stable vocationally and otherwise. And I said, you know, I really would like to find somebody who needs this money more than we do. So why don't we pray and um, see if the Lord's got somebody who needs this. And so my wife agreed, we talked about it and we prayed. And then out of nowhere, there was a, a couple, now I'm going to try to anonymize this a bit by removing details from the story. Um, but I didn't know these people. Uh, I somehow had digitally connected with the husband at some point, but I didn't know this person at all. I'd never talked to them on the phone or anything. And uh, again, reducing detail, something had happened in their family and they had a huge emergency and it was very clear that their long-term earnings potential would be severely decreased for the rest of their lives and they had kids who were young. And I saw an opportunity where that money could significantly uh, benefit them by providing changes to their situation that would vastly reduce their cost of living for, for the duration. That sounds weird and ambiguous, but I'm just trying to reduce the details. But that was, that was the, the situation. And so I contacted these folks and I said, it, oh, at first I talked to my wife, obviously. We, we prayed about this and I said, all right, this is great. And you know, there's always a concern, what's gonna happen if, if people end up spending money differently than you would and whatever. And we felt that there was a way to handle this so that uh, no matter what happened outside of our hands, we would feel confident in the choices we were making that, that this would be uh, an acceptable expression to God of our gratitude for how he had taken care of us so far in our lives. 
um, in so many ways that, that extend far beyond money. And we wanted to be in a position where we would have the confidence to know that we had lived our lives the right way, no matter what happened to us financially in the future. Uh, which it turns out is, has been a, um, a, good, a good policy for us that has paid um, many emotional dividends, if not financial. Anyway, so um, I reached out to this family and um, I, uh, this part's going to be hard to anonymize, Basically, I said I did not reveal. Uh, I said I wanted to help, but I didn't reveal that I wanted to help to a crazy extent. Um, and so they thought that they were just dealing with a run of the mill situation of someone reaching out to help. Um, but I asked them what their plan was, if they had any specific ideas on not just short term minimization of inconvenience, but long-term maximization of well-being. And of course, I didn't phrase it that way, but this is, again, I'm trying to describe this in, in anonymous terms. And I tried to help them along into that line of thinking and asking them, um, you know, if there were no monetary limits, what do you think the best situation would be and what would you do if you had you know, blank check. And the answers just kept coming back as, we just want people to give us money. And um, when pressed, the answers turned into, basically, we're going to do very expensive things right now to make ourselves as comfortable as we can right now, even if that makes us even worse off in the long term than we already are. And again, I, I tried to help steer this as much as you can at a distance, not knowing people at all. Um, but in the end, uh, they were pretty stuck in their idea that this was the, the way to try to, to um, basically maximize short-term pleasure, even at the expense of long-term well-being. And so um, that was not something that I could support financially. And to this day, I'm sure these people have no idea what they uh, turned down. Um, because I, 100%, my wife and I were ready to write a check to total strangers for every dollar we had above what we needed, which happened to be at least $120,000. And we were not rich. That was... Um, that was that was years and years and years and years and years and years worth of savings at uh, my salary at the time. That that was pre-tax at least as much as a year's salary at that time, I believe. Um, so when I say it was a boon, it was a lot of money out of nowhere. So um, anyway, it it never happened, and and. Uh, that makes me really sad because it it feels good to help people in any way. It feels a lot better to help people in major ways that that maybe uh, not only you could do, but you know what I mean. Like like when you give your widow's might and you're you're all in, but you don't have that much to give. That's obviously worth a lot to God in God's eyes. I mean, and it makes you feel good. Not that that's why you do it, but you feel good because you know you're doing your best to help others, and that's a good thing. Um, but when you actually have a buttload of things to give, and you're willing to give them all down to the dregs, um, and there's nowhere to put that, that doesn't feel very good at all. Um, and it would feel way better if there was a place where it could be received. Okay, so what does this have to do with anything I started the video with? Well, the good that's scattered through life, it's not just things and situations. It's not flowers only, or the beautiful sunrises and chirping birds, which is a blessing and a curse in my situation, because I have a garden and they eat my stuff. Um, but it's also people. 
It's also people. And uh, we have to get this into our brains that being created in the image of God, we ought to be looking for the greatest blessings tied to people, whether that's giving or receiving. So the beauty and the goodness that's hidden all around in life, it's just scattered. You know, it's rare. That flower is a weird thing. I showed you the background. It's just like, you know, um, clutter, just toys and, and stuff. You couldn't see just the kids that left a bunch of stuff on the couch too. Um, the windows are a little dirty, you know, but here's this beautiful tropical flower in the middle of a very cold state. It, it's, it's a weird thing and it doesn't belong. And yet it still doesn't stick out enough to people to get them to pause and think, wow, this is, there's something to this. This is beautiful. And, um, so many things are beautiful and we miss it, but so many people are good and they, and it's rare. Okay. It's like a flower, a tropical flower on a windowsill in Montana is not what you expect to see, but they're much more numerous than we think. And that love that people are willing to flow from heaven to earth, it exists. Now it exists in people outside of you and you have to learn to see that and receive it. But it also exists inside of you, at least in potential, but in many of you, it, it's there. It just needs a channel to flow. The people who have it need a channel to flow to you. And as you receive it from wherever, or if you have it already, you need a channel to flow it out to others. And God is providing that today. And it's a beautiful thing. And he will continue to expand those channels with time. And there's a beautiful scripture in the Book of Mormon where Nephi has this vision and an angel comes and he shows him the tree of life. And Nephi says, what's this? And um, the angel calls the love of God the most beautiful thing. And it is. And he says this line about it shedding itself abroad. How? Through the hearts of men. So it's through humans that that flows. And it's a beautiful thing. And we can, we can understand money. You know, that's something we deal with. And we, we tend to, not today so much, but we tend to have ways of coming to know the value of that through work and through losing it. So through how we gain it and how we lose it and what we get with it, we tend to understand the value of that. But all good things have value. And uh, also you come to learn the, the value of that in the same way as you do the value of money. It's through the price you pay and through what you receive and through what you lose. And uh, anyway, we need to get a whole lot better at recognizing the value of God's love and in all the different ways it can manifest, and especially in and through people, including yourself.